I'm with some, uh, uh, with some, what I think is going to be a cool video showing uh, Overclock's fall project, fall practice project. So first a little bit about me, uh, I'm Dr. Joe, I uh, uh, was one of the co-founders of uh, Team 47, Chief Delphi. I've uh, been a little bit of a nomad, I've helped out a little bit with Overclock, my, not with um, uh, Mech Warriors, and uh, I then went to Ursa Major for a year, I was on uh, Schrodinger's Cat, and uh, now I did Boom Done last year, and um, now I'm working with uh, 246 Overclocked and BU Academy and Boston University. So um, anyway, uh, I'm here to unveil our fall uh, practice project for the first season. Um, it wouldn't be first if uh, we weren't uh, using borrowed space. So this is, we're here in the, in the uh, uh, engineering uh, building at Boston University, and uh, we've uh, cleared out a little bit of a snack area. And uh, so we're, uh, we didn't, uh, we thought we could ask for permission <laughs> after people said you shouldn't be here, so uh, we're just borrowing the space. So, uh, you know, under-resourced and uh, behind, it's Christmas Eve, so, uh, you know, we had planned on finishing this project for, uh, for Thanksgiving, so, you know, we're under-resourced and late, so pretty much we're the story of every first team out there. So, um, let me tell you a little bit, I uh, uh, just joined Overclocked, and uh, I really believe very strongly that one of the ways that you up your game in terms of first is to have a hard enough first fall project. So, we decided to have a project we're calling Rover that had uh, some, some real uh, electrical components, had some real mechanical components, and some real, um, uh, some, some definitely some tough programming. So uh, first of all, before I get, uh, get a, shout out, a little shout out to uh, Anthony Lapp and uh, his company, Team221.com, uh, they, uh, uh, they provided for us a, uh, some, some Wildsworth modules, which um, you know, gave us the activation energy. The, the mechanical team really uh, was not really up to designing from scratch a, uh, a four-wheel drive, four-wheel swerve chassis, which you know, we decided that's, that was the hard project we wanted to do. And uh, it was just going to be too hard. And I was talking to Anthony, and he basically uh, said, hey, you know, um, if you want to stretch your wings a little bit, I'm going to support you. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to Team221.com uh, and Anthony Lab's company. And uh, we use Wildsworks. We're pretty happy with them. I'll tell you some of the hits and misses about it later. But uh, generally, if you need to go with, uh, with a four-wheel drive, four-wheel swerve, and your team is not really the team that can design from scratch. You know, team221.org or .com has some really great, uh, great uh, wild swerve or different swerve modules for you to try. Um, you know, it's not really commercial, but I got to give I got to give credit where credit is due. So, um, all right, let me tell you a little bit about Rover. But first of all, let's see Rover. So, uh, uh, Paul, can you uh, can you roll in Rover for us here? All right, I'll tell you a lot about it in a bit, but first of all, let's get it set up and uh, get it ready to drive. All right, Paul, so whenever you're ready, let's, uh, let's demonstrate Rover. actually four wheel independent swerve. So each of these wheels, there's four of them, can turn and point in the right direction. So if we're spinning about our center, they all spin in the direction and go about their center. Whenever we want to go in a certain direction, we, we do the calculations and we, we turn as we as we rotate. So it's uh, to give you a take on, on what we've got, first of all, we've got the, the wild sports from team221.com, like I said. Uh, we're driving not with their standard drive system, but we've decided to use Bangbot motors with versaplanetary gearboxes. Total ratio from the, the Bangbot to the swerve drive is 54 to 1. Uh, probably a little bit too fast. You see a lot of oscillation. It just is uh, it's a, a bridge too far in terms of the speed that this thing can rotate. We want to be able to go fast and rotate and go in the speeds and where we want it to go, but it's a, probably a little bit too fast for at least the loop time we can get with the C Rio to be able to keep up with. We have really high hopes for being able to use the, uh, the Talon SRX uh, to try and make the control be better, but that's a future project. So we've got, uh, we've got uh, sensors on here that tell us what direction. We can go plus or minus three 
turns. So six revolutions each way. All right, I'll talk a little bit more about is that the right thing. So these, there's hollow drives on the wild spur, so we're driving right through the, the wires go this loop to give us enough wire to wind up and unwind three, three full turns in each direction. Um, so our, our mobility was definitely one of the things that we wanted to get uh, in this fall project. Uh, the other was we wanted to be able to uh, be difficult to pin and we wanted to be able to be uh, easy to get out of jams. So um, we, we uh, heads off to, um, oh wait, first of all, before I go into that, before I go into the bumper, uh, I want to go into, we have on here a NAV6, which is, uh, uh, you can Google that, it's made by a team, a first team out of Hawaii. It's essentially a pointing north device. Whatever direction it wakes up in, it tries to keep track of that direction as you rotate. And so Paul, even though he's, um, you know, the, the rotate, so the ro robot, make it go that way, Paul. So he's just pulling the joystick towards him and it goes that way. Okay, now turn a little bit. Right. And now push the joystick towards me. Okay, so basically the, uh, the gyro is keeping track of that. It's, it's using some really, some really fantastic, like literal rocket science sort of stuff to do that. It's all in a nice package. We have some issues with it. We're not quite sure. We're working through that, but that's why you do it in the fall project instead of doing it in the first season. So, all right, so that's with the, with the NAV6. So we've got Bainbot, Versa Planetaries. We've got our Wild Swerves. We have uh, uh, sensors on all these different things. We have a sensor that tells us what direction is, uh, you know, what I'll say field north is. Um, the other part is making we want to make a, a virtually uh, a, a difficult to pin robot, and that's we have a it's twelve sided, but from a practical point of view, it's almost brown, and uh, that we think is going to be hard for people to try to pin. And also, hats off to uh, Cheesy Poops and um, on the team and Hot for telling us uh, telling the world actually at a team dub I read about some experiments they've done with uh, sailcloth as a first legal buffer material. Um, we've done some experiments, we've ordered a number of different sail plots, and we found one we thought was the slipperiest that was first legal, and uh, we're going to do some demos of that, but we think we're really, really excited about it. If you want to have a robot that's, you know, going to be able to get out of, uh, out of friction pins, I think, uh, I think we're really on to something. Uh, a lot of times in an open field, the robot's coming in, they go face to face, and it's just, uh, you know, basically a friction pin, you can't, uh, can't get where you need to get to. But uh, with Rover, we're kind of round, and also we can move the wheels where we need to. We're going to drive in. As we're driving in, we're going to be rolling off. Hopefully, Dr. Joe the robot will end up with egg on its face, and Rover will be there scoring the balls. Let's see how it goes. Okay, unlike in an open field where you know, you're rolling off, if I have high friction, I can still roll off. In a case where you're stuck between some field element and another robot, that's the case where you really, you really, I think sailcloth really earns its way on board. Here's the sailcloth. It's gonna, we're gonna try and there's a hard beam, a hard element piece. Imagine this is a pyramid or some other sort of thing. A robot is, is pushing hard, trying to keep it going. Trust me, I'm not sandbagging. I'm gonna be really trying to keep this in. Uh, the drivers are going to be doing their best. They're going to roll off the game piece and slide this over, and we'll see if uh, if I can keep it in or if it can get out. Let's do it. Color me impressed. Okay, so it's that time, firsters. We are. Uh, uh, we're about time in the video where we talk about hits or misses, about things that we really liked and things we just didn't quite get done. Um, hits, I think, first of all, having four-wheel drive, four-wheel swerve, big hit. Big hit, I'm really impressed with how you can get all the vectors lined up and go the direction you want to go. Um, uh, the wild, uh, wild swerves, uh, team221.com, uh, Anthony Lab, big, big, big thanks to you. I'm, I'm impressed. There are some things I don't like about it. I'll mention that in a little bit, but wild swerves generally, I think the nearly round shape and the sailcloth together, I think, boy, those are really, really big winners. I think if you're looking for a mobility platform, four-wheel drive, four-wheel swerve, nearly round robot, sailcloth, I think you're going to get where you need to go in that, during the first season. Um, so, uh, other hits, let's see. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the chain tensioning, I like how we did chain tensioning this year. So, we used, uh, we, we used the, the bracketry from, um, 
uh, from Wild Swerve, but we put instead of uh, instead of their standard gearbox, we put uh, we, we're steering with a Bangbot Versa Planetary and uh, 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 attached to to this 54 to one, a little bit too fast, I think. Uh, unless we're going to get a faster loop time with the robot Rio, the C Rio certainly cannot handle this at the, at the speeds that it, we're up to. We can't put enough derivative in to stabilize it. So if you understand PID loops, you know that uh, basically we go unstable because of the, the loop time. And uh, maybe, the, maybe the SRX or maybe the robot Rio will be able to maintain a faster loop time. Uh, NAV6, pretty impressive. You know, it, it, there's still some things we have to worry about. Uh, I have to get some bugs worked out, but I'm telling you, as far as uh, you know, pointing north device, it's uh, it's pretty amazing stuff, packaged in a in a nice little uh, put in a nice little bow and and uh, just an RS232 connection to it, boom done. Um, so uh, other uh, um, okay, so now misses. Um, you know the the wild swerves. These are nice. They they drive through the uh, through the the axle, but um, I think we're going to end up breaking these eventually. I think we're going to have to go with some wire that's maybe like uh, Ultraflex or something for the bit that does the spinning. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing about the, the wild swerves that I like but I don't like is um, if you look at the bearing structure here, right? This bearing thing, I, I, I think I need to do better on this. But this is what comes out of the box. It's working. Um, you know, it's it's just not it's not what I would call awesome. It's not necessarily a hit, but it's a uh, um, you know, it's it's there. Uh, these wheels are pretty grippy. I wish I could get, uh, wish I could get some Colsons in this size. That would be nice. But um, but basically, so here here we go. So that's that's the the, um, the, the gist of it. Um, looking back, so what other things? I guess from a missed point of view, is you know today is the day before Christmas. It's not the day before Thanksgiving. Our team kind of missed, overclocked, uh, didn't quite get it done. I mean, we got a lot done. But we didn't get it done in our time frame. Uh, four weeks late just isn't going to work in the first season. However, the practice project generally, I think, was a huge hit. It stretched all of our things. We learned how to do mechanics build. We learned how to wire. We didn't get done the, the, uh, the, the point, the, the, the display of which direction the robot thinks is north. Uh, that didn't get done. But, you know, but the team actually exercised all of its, all of its muscles. And uh, we learned a lot about what we can do and what we can't do. And we learned it now. We didn't learn it like six weeks into the build season. So I'm really, really excited. I, I think you guys, I hope you guys, um, uh, you know, share in the comments of this. We're going to pu publish the uh, software, and we're going to publish the um, uh, uh, the CAD design. Uh, look for that in the Chief Delphi comment someplace. And uh, I just want to say I'm really excited to be on Overclocked, and I'm excited to have another first season coming up and uh, two decades, and let's see where it goes from here. Uh, tick tock, overclocked.